now from V90, you've created a new engine lineup with uh, engines with relatively small displacements. Yep. Do you think that uh, the age of big V6, V8 engines for premium cars is are over? It's over? Ah, I, I could say yes, of course, but mm -hmm. I w wouldn't be honest. And of course, there will be customers that still drive V6s and V8s. And, and no, it's fine. I don't have any problem with that. It's just not our answer to it. And, we're not going to go there and offer those kind of gas guzzling uh, machines anymore. We think we have taken the decision to go for the intelligent way of providing customers with real high performance. We combine a combustion engine, you know, four cylinder, two liter, 320 horsepower. You know, it's quite a lot of horsepower out of that engine. And we combine that together with an electric motor, battery into the tunnel, electric motor on the rear axle. And then you have 407 horsepower combined. You have an all-wheel drive. You have 640 newton meters. You have zero to 100 in 5.6 seconds. And you only need two liters of fuel, fuel consumption. That's our answer. And I always say a bit with a smile in my face is, come on, you know, we are only shooting for 2% market penetration or, or market share in Europe, 1% in China, and 1% in the US. There will be guys and girls driving gas gasoline V8s for quite some time, but it's not going to be a Volvo, and it doesn't have to be a Volvo. Okay, uh, you already have uh, plug-in hybrids, and what's the next step for Volvo? Maybe a uh, fuel cells car? <laughs> yeah, it's a very interesting question. First of all, we have plug-in hybrids, and we are very successful with it. Actually, coming back to you know the, the first question you asked, we have penetrations in Europe of 10% for our T8 engine in the XC90. 10%, that's quite a bit. In the US, we have 20%. So 20% of our customers go to a T8 and have that as, as the you know, engine or powertrain of their choice. This is beyond all my dreams, I have to say, uh, and is a proof of that concept works. And we're going to have that concept in all our cars in the future. Every car we're going to launch will have a T8, so a plug-in hybrid version, or a version for smaller cars where this plug-in is just the front wheel driven plug-in. What's the next step? The next step after plug-in hybrid is battery electric vehicle. And I think you will probably remind me that some time ago we said, well, you know, we don't know, we are not so sure whether battery electric vehicle is the right answer. Well. I think now is time to really be ready for battery electric vehicle because there's technology and cost coming this the right way. Technology is improving, new chemistry is coming, prices are going down and that is really making it an attractive approach, having a battery electric vehicle for Volvo and we're going to do that and we will launch a battery electric vehicle at the end of this decade. And the beauty is that our architecture is prepared for that. No big deal, you know, we'll just put in a combustion engine, fine. We put in a plug-in hybrid and, you know, the battery is in the tunnel and the motor is on the rear axle, no problem. And then we use the same architecture and put the battery in the vehicle and have, you know, two motors, one in the front and the rear, and have a battery electric vehicle. You just need a can opener to make a little hole in that uh, floor and put a battery in. Have very ambitious plan, ambitious plans about safety. Uh, in a few years, no no passenger uh, is gonna die in your car. Is it really possible to achieve such thing? Yeah, we think it is is possible. But on the other hand, you need to understand it's a vision first of all. But it's also a commitment given from Volvo to do the utmost technologically possible to really make happen that nobody gets seriously injured or even being killed in a new Volvo. If some people do, you know, some things they shouldn't do in cars, you know, you know we, we can't protect everything and everywhere if, if people really misuse cars and systems, etc. But as, as, as a absolute, our vision and technology we're developing goes and follows our curve. And we have this, this line actually going from, you know, many fatalities to zero fatalities and all our cars are exactly like a per chain on, on that line and the XC90 was a big big step forward with all the 
passive safety of 40% boron ultra high strength steel. Passive safety, very important. And all the active safety systems where you know we just have run of road mitigation, we're gonna you know detect bicyclists, we don't wanna detect passenger, you know, pedestrians, we have large animals, the cars driving in front of you, behind you. All of that together is making that car the safest car that has ever been built and tested, actually proven by NHTSA and your NCAP. Um, and that makes us confident that we are on our way. But, you know, it is, you have to understand this as a strong commitment from us, which is nobody else has given, and a vision which we do everything to fulfill that. Will that be, you know, as, as a, you know, let's say 100% absolute dead end 2020? I don't know, maybe it's earlier. Maybe it's going to be a bit later, it doesn't matter. We work as the brand the hardest amongst all OEMs to make it happen. By the way, with very great support from the Swedish government actually that have the same strategy and, and vision for, for Sweden. Zero fatalities. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.